The prompt for this presentation was to discuss a game that became famous due to the gaming community rather than because of the game itself. At first, I was going to talk about Call of Duty because the game is notorious for its terrible community, i.e. the mobs of people who say they know my mom. But Call of Duty kind of stands on its own merit for gameplay, and I think it would be just as well known with or without its fans. I had no idea what to talk about. Hours of brainstorming turned to days of brainstorming. I became an emotional wreck. I went to my refrigerator to get a refreshing beverage, and I knew exactly what I had to do. Flashback to the year 1996, a simpler time. The Pepsi Corporation, in their infinite wisdom, decided they needed a mascot to represent their brand. Many mascots were fielded, but after much deliberation, they landed on Pepsi Man. Pepsi Man is a bizarre superhero, the likes of whom could only have come from Japan. According to the official canon, Pepushi Man came to be when a cosmic metal NASA was studying became fused with the Pepsi a man nearby was drinking. Sort of like Peter Parker, but not at all. Pepsi Man's singular power is thirst quenching, which he does by shooting streams of Pepsi out of his hand, or his mouth, or somewhere else. Let's just go with his hand. He appeared in a series of commercials in the mid-90s in which he delivers Pepsi to the needy and usually injures himself in the process. The commercials never made it to the US. But 1996 came and went, and so too did the beloved mascot. But not forever. Fast forward to the year 1999, a year of Pokemon, Star Wars, and partying. Like it was 1999. What happened was completely inexplicable. Pepsi decided to revive the now dead mascot, not on television, but as a video game. The character was licensed to Kindle Imagine Development. On a shoestring budget, they created a game that would become legend. One day. The game is an endless runner in which you play as who else but Pepsi Man. Lacking the budget to do pre-rendered 3D cutscenes, they relied instead on strange FMV sequences featuring actor Mike Butters. Hey, let's start the game! The game's release was not met with any fanfare, since it was just a shitty licensed game akin to Eminem kart racing. Approaching the only periodical to actually review the Japan-only release gave it low marks, calling it simplistic and rote memorization based. It seemed destined to fall into obscurity. But Pepsi Man was destined for greatness. It's winter of 2016. The games are selected for the speedrunning marathon Awesome Games Done Quick. Pepsi Man is selected. Summertime comes and the stage is set. Good morning, the runner is Boyks. His couch consists of Jeff and a man in a Pepsi Man costume. Soon into the run, the entire audience is chanting. The game becomes a trend on Twitter, and 16 minutes into the run... I just want to let you know that this game is the number one watched game right now on That's Twitch. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Pepsi Man. That's so good. In the course of the run, Mike Butters gets 4,000 new followers, and AGDQ receives over $13,000 in donations. Pepsi Man is not a game that became famous because of its tight gameplay. Nor is it a game that became famous because of its beloved mascot, who was largely unknown in the US. Pepsi Man is not even a game that got famous because it was so bad it's good. The gameplay is just bad. Pepsi Man got famous because a community came together to showcase the games they love and to raise money for a good cause. Pepsi Man forever. <laughs> Pepsi for pizza. He had a pizza. That was the joke. He had a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> I feel